Hello dear students and welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we will look at fraction equations and see how we can solve them. As the name suggests, these are equations that contain fractions and have an unknown in the denominator of the fraction. Before we get started right now with the new equations, let's repeat briefly what we learned previously. We learned these terms, the top number is the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. Then we have said a fraction is nothing more than a division, so it can always be written as division. And here we have to be careful, if instead of a 4 down here, we have for example a sum. Or here with a variable. Then we are not allowed to directly write here plus x, that would be wrong. Because that would be calculated as 1 divided by 4 and then plus x. We have to put this in parentheses to make it correct. And the same applies to the numerator, if we have for example a sum or a difference. Then we have to put the parentheses here as well. Okay, but let's take a closer look at equations of fractions. Back to the fractions. We learned that we can write every integer as a fraction, with this one here. We learned what expanding and simplifying is. When expanding, we multiply up and down with the same number. Here in the example with 2 we get another fraction, 6 eighths in this example, but it still has the same value as 3 quarters. 3 quarters is 0 0.75, and 6 eighths is 0 0.75 as well. That's why we have the equal sign here too. And when simplifying, we reverse that. We take the 6 eighths and divide the numerator and the denominator by 2 and get 3 quarters again. Then we saw how addition and subtraction work on fractions. For this example 1 half plus 3 quarters. We have to make the denominator the same, that means down there both must have the same number. For example, here we can choose 4 because we can expand the 2 to the 4. So we expand 1 half to 2 quarters, and then we can calculate 2 plus 3 over 4 and we get 5 quarters. We used the same procedure for subtraction, except every plus here would be a minus instead. We also had multiplication, where we have to multiply numerators with numerators and denominators with denominators and get for this example 3 eighths. And for division we used the so-called reciprocal. That means when we divide by 3 quarters we have to switch the 3 and the 4, that is the reciprocal. And then we can apply the rule of multiplication and multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator and get 4 sixths. Of course we could simplify that with 2 to 2 thirds, and that's the solution to this problem. And if you don't remember, take another look at the lesson on fractions. And from another lesson, how did we multiply a fraction by a whole number? Right, then the whole number jumped up to the numerator. So here we get 1 times 5 halves, so 5 halves, and we also need to know mixed numbers that we learned about. 5 halves can be written as 2 plus 1 half and the plus sign can be removed, so we get 2 and a half, the mixed number. And in the lesson with terms and equations we learned that on both sides of an equation, for example here 3 plus an unknown number equals 5, we can do the same operation to both sides and x does not change. So if we subtract 3 on both sides, we get the 3 and the minus 3 here to cancel to 0. x plus 0 is x. And on the right side of the equation 5 minus 3 is 2. And here you can see when we insert 2, the equation is correct. In our original equation, if we use the 2 here, 3 plus 2 is 5. So with transformations like this we can change our equation as we need to and the value for x always stays the same. Now that we reviewed the essentials, we can move on to equations of fractions. As we said, in equations of fractions we have an unknown in the denominator of a fraction, and our task is to determine the value of this unknown. 
If we have something like this we know 2 over x equals 0 0.5, here we have 2 over x and we can remove the x by multiplying by x. Let's do that on both sides of the equation. So we get 2 over x times x equals 0 0.5 times x, and this simplifies to 2, and we get the equation 2 equals 0 0.5 times x. At this point, some may wonder why 2 over x times x simplifies to 2? And you can imagine it like this, take this again and look at only the 2 over x times x. We know that multiplying a fraction by a number causes it to jump upwards. That means we can also write it this way, 2 times x over x. And now you know, we can cancel the top x and bottom x, and we are left with 1. 2 times 1 over 1 is 2. Or we can now write that as a division and recognize it as x divided by x, and a number divided by itself always gives 1. And 2 times 1 is of course 2. Good, so now that this transformation is done we continue with our equation. Now we have 2 on the left side and 0 0.5 times x on the right. And now we want to get the x alone. That means we have to get rid of the 0 0.5 here. And remember with multiplication, there is the commutative law, which says in multiplication we can switch the order of the factors. So we can also write x times 0 0.5. And now we can conveniently divide the 0 0.5 off here. That means we write here, that we want to divide 0 0.5 on both sides. And then we get 2 divided by 0 0.5 equals x times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, which is 1. x remains. And now we can calculate the left side. 2 divided by 0 0.5 gives 4. So x equals 4 is our solution. And let's look up here. If we let x equal 4 then we have 2 quarters and 2 quarters is 0 0.5. We can also simplify 2 quarters. We have 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom, and we get 1 half. And 1 half is the same as 0 0.5, so we know x equals 4 is the right solution. Well, this task was still pretty easy, so let's increase the difficulty. What happens now, when there is a sum down here? For example, x plus 3. How do we solve this now? Before we multiplied here by x. And now, that the 2 stands alone here, we have to multiply this fraction by x plus 3. So we multiply on both sides and we get 2 over x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0 0.5 times x plus 3. And we said earlier at the beginning of the lesson, for example, if there is a sum here. In the denominator, we should always put the parentheses. So we should do that here as well. Since we multiply with a term, we can move this term to the top of the fraction. Before we had x and x went up, now we have x plus 3, think of that as big x, and that jumps up here. And now we can simplify this part and this part to 1, just like in the previous task with 2 times x over x being 2. Now we have our x changed, we simply added 3 to it. Nevertheless, 2 times this term divided by this term still gives 2. As a hint, we said before, a number may jump to the top of the fraction, and a number may also jump down from the top of the fraction. And this time, the x plus 3 does not jump down like this, but we take the 2 down. And of course we can always put them back in the fraction at any time. But now you see x plus 3 over x plus 3, this is a term divided by itself, so we get 1. That means this one part falls away. And now we still need to solve the right side, and you know we can use the distributive law. If we have a sum here, and we have a factor here, then multiply each element. So we get 0 0.5 times x, then plus, and then 0 0.5 times 3. And that looks different, but it's still the same. As I said, look back at the lesson on the distributive law, where we explained it before.
good, and now we can calculate 0.5 times 3, that is 1.5, we subtract that on both sides, then here we get minus 1.5 and here we get minus 1.5, these two cancel to 0, that falls away. Now we can calculate the left, here 2 minus 1.5 is 0.5, and now we want the x to stand alone. We divide by 0.5 on both sides. This results in 1 and here the 0.5 and 0.5 simplifies to 1, so x is alone. So our solution is x equals 1. And if we use this value here, we get 2 over 1 plus 3, that would be 4. And 2 quarters is 0.5. This is a true statement, so we calculated the value for x correctly. And another hint. You can write 1 equals x, or you can switch it to x equals 1. Both variants are possible and it's up to you which way to write it. Very nice, let's take a look at some of the harder tasks in the next few videos on fraction equations.